What's up? All right. So I saw a video where someone was talking about the difference in SARMs and your steroids. There is a very, very, very well-defined difference in these. And that's why one's legal and one's, well, legal to purchase as a research chemical. And one is absolutely um, illegal to purchase without prescription. So you got <clears throat> a SARM, which is a selective androgen receptor modulator, right? Versus a steroid. Well, in the name, you have selective versus steroid, which is systemic, which means it goes throughout the entire body. Number of dose preserves or reduces prostate size for the SARM steroid enlarges prostate. SARM non no steroidal backbone. See that is the steroidal backbone. That C seventeen. Backbone is not present in your selective androgen receptor modulator. This is how you can tell the difference chemically. Um, not or mildly androgenic, meaning you get the male properties like growing a beard and you know things like that. Steroid is very androgenic. Um, not or mildly liver or kidney toxic, even in an oral form, especially in an oral form. Whereas if you take a steroid orally, it's going to drill a hole through your liver to get into the bloodstream. This means liver toxic, then will be kidney toxic. Okay? Um, especially oral steroids. Now, when you bypass the liver to put the steroid directly into the bloodstream, okay, this is called injection, then you bypass the liver, meaning you don't have to methylate the steroid, which means no hole in the liver, and then it's much less toxic, but a SARM is actually made to be metabolized by the liver, this is why we don't inject them, um, and by doing so, it, it's not the liver lets this pass through, whereas a steroid, the liver does not allow passage. A hormone, you can eat hormones all day long. You can eat all the testosterone you want. You ain't gonna get swollen. So, then you have, um, SARM is not a hormone. It might make a hormone, but it's not. <laughs> all right. um, whereas a steroid is hormonal. This means you can't eat it. Um, SARM, not estrogenic by nature. Now, what this means is it's not estrogenic in that it does not form estrogen when used directly. That doesn't mean that your testosterone might not drop if you take too much for too long and you get an estrogen imbalance because your testosterone drops it. That's possible. What this means is it's not going to be estrogenic like testosterone converting to estrogen or causing estrogen to rise. This isn't seen as a hormone, so it's not going to give that same effect. Um, a SARM may not need a PCT if taken in low doses and taken for, you know, a, six weeks. Whereas your steroids are almost always a must post-cycle therapy to retain muscle. Now, that doesn't mean, the difference here is this one, you're going to bounce back your testosterone levels fast enough to keep the muscle you gained if you properly were to research that on your research animal because there's one other main difference here too. Whereas this one, the steroid, you're going to have to post psychotherapy to get your testosterone levels up fast enough so that you retain your muscle and you don't get titties. 
This one will turn you into Caitlyn Jenner without PCT. This one will not turn you into Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> All right. So they're both, what they have in common is they're both very anabolic. Okay, as a matter of fact, milligram to milligram, some songs are actually stronger than most steroids. But this one, the steroid, you have to have a prescription. Like, or you go to jail. Unless you email me at sethnhc at gmail.com and I can tell you. Um, this one, on the other hand, this one is legal for you to purchase, but you cannot take it. You cannot use it. You can only use it as a research chemical because SARMs are not for human consumption. They're not to be eaten, snorted, banged, stared at too long. They're not to be insulted or put in your mother-in-law's food. You just can't do any of that. If you stare at it too long, it might cause side effects. But steroids, on the other hand, you can't have them at all. So these may cause bodily harm. These will cause bodily harm. But... These you can buy, these you cannot. As long as you buy these as a research chemical and not as a supplement, because the minute you put it as a supplement, you broke the law. I didn't make the rules. This is your false data administration that makes these rules. All right? So, um, furthermore, I mean, that pretty much covers it. See, a steroid here, I didn't quite go over this, when you orally take it, it's liver, kidney toxic. Now, injections, some of them are liver and kidney toxic. Some of them aren't. I recommend, like, checking out the 44 on Swole. He's probably much more well-versed in this than I am. Um, or Tony Hughes is much better versed in this than I am. Um, and Tony's buddy. Um, like, the people he has on, the people he does things with Trevor. These are really brilliant people when it comes to this stuff. But injection, when you bypass the liver, now let's say one injects something like, say, Winstrol. I don't know why the hell you would do that, considering it is methylated already and it's going to go through your liver and your kidneys. And when you bypass the liver by injection, it hurt. Like that stuff is the most painful. I've seen people that do it, I wouldn't do it. I, I watch him. I'm like, no, no, I like walking. You don't want to inject with straw. It's like ridiculous. Now, do I think that injecting SARMs would be a good idea for your research purposes? No. They're made to be metabolized through the liver. Like the liver has to break them down for them to work the way they are intended to in studies. So I'm not sure why we would inject those. I was about to help supply injectable SARMs at one time and well if it's supposed to be metabolized through the liver it leads me to believe that there might be a reason and I could be wrong I've been wrong before um it might make it more anabolic but it also may make it you may grow the research animal might grow four testicles and six dicks or something and we just don't know what we don't know. And with that, we just don't know. Now, with this said, both of them may need a PCT. Both of them can have issues if taking it too high dosage or taking too long. You have to use a smidge of common sense. But these you don't take at all. You never take a SARM. SARMs are not for human consumption. I don't know how else I can express this, but... They're only for research because we, we've got years and years and years and years and years of studies on steroids. We know what they do. We know what's going to happen. We know how you got a PCT, and we know if you don't, you turn into Caitlyn Jenner. Um, and that's fine if you like to be a crying little bitch. But for most of us, I mean, if I had the option, but you don't have the option. Nobody has the option. You can't do that. That's just illegal, wrong, and... Um, you know, you're overbearing, unnecessary, illegal, and um, completely and totally out of touch of government has made some rules that you have to abide by. Because they think you're an idiot and not an adult and shouldn't be able to make your own decisions. 
if I can't make my own decisions about what substances that I decide are good for me and my health, how in the hell can I make decisions about governing my own finances? Maybe the government should take over all money, all land, and um, get self-driving cars before we all kill each other. As a matter of fact, why in the world don't they just put cameras everywhere and anyone who speeds, they just automatically give a ticket to, or better yet, why don't they just govern cars at 70 miles an hour since that is the fastest speed limit in the United States? Wouldn't that just make more sense if we need someone to govern us so damn bad? But that's not freedom, is it? That doesn't give you the choice. That doesn't leave us with the opportunity to be who we want to be for reasons of our own making. For life, liberty, and the pursuit of my happiness is the founding of this country that all men are created equal and endowed with certain unalienable rights like life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. And because those are God-given rights, only God can take them away. So whenever the government shows up to say, hey, did you, did you, go, did you bring God? Because if you didn't bring God, you can get the fuck on out of here. And it also gives you a basis to stifle an out of control, unnecessary, overbearing government. That has been quite nice to me up to this point for some reason, which I'm cool with. Thank you. Um, but if we are to believe anything we see on the news, some haven't fared so well, but I don't know that I believe anything I see on the news. I think it's a bunch of BS too. Nonetheless, back to the subject at hand. The reason SARMs are not steroids, the reason they're different, and the reason they can be bought as research chemicals is, according to the law, there's no C-17 steroidal backbone. That means it's not a steroid. That means you can buy it as a research chemical until they actually pass a law, which as long as they abide by the law, you're good. Now, I've seen some companies getting some trouble, but it appears that the government agency is not following the letter of the law by, well, Enforcing only that which is written into law, but assuming some things, and that's just to protect the pharmaceutical interest and the people that kill 210,000 of us every year. They'll shut down the small stores to make sure that no one ever competes with their dope dealers. How would you like to have a dope dealing operation that had the strong arm of the United States government to shut down any competition that you have? For if I want to sell heroin on the street, then I go to prison for life. But if the doctor wants to write you a prescription for a pain pill that's heroin, he can be the deacon in a church. And there's a problem there. There's a problem when you addict people with the same dope that's on the street. Yet, the guy in the white coat gets let go because whatever reason, there's never... It's never okay to have a double standard. They say, well, you could go to medical school and pass it. Yeah, no, when dealing with life and death situations and my choice as to what I may want to use if I'm dying, who the hell do you think you are to tell me what I can and can't do? I thought the whole idea of becoming an adult was that we 
got to make our own decisions and we got to suffer the consequences or reap the benefits of our own intellectual abilities to decide exactly what the hell we want. But, okay, went too long on that. So, there's your difference and that's why we have to, well, we have to, really the difference is the benefits versus the side effects. Hopefully one day whenever you can have these prescribed to you by your doctor, till then you can't take them anyway. So it really doesn't matter except for those few rogue individuals that I do not approve of. You should never take these. I have a fish frog monkey mouse saber tooth spider cricket. He's my best friend. Okay. And uh, he, goes, he, he goes everywhere with me. Like that's my buddy, right? See it? So, if you have one of these and you like to do research, well, that's why he looks like that. So, anyway, newsarms.com. Love y'all. Peace. I got two cameras going here, so I don't know which one is going to make it on YouTube or if this video even will. And if it does, please like, subscribe, share, go by newsarms, um, and get you a talking piece of one of these new things we got right here. Muscle up. I'll tell you about it in a minute.